The fact that this is coming out publicly, we and others have pointed to a long record of people being threatened for simply having reported, having seen objects they couldn't identify, anomalous phenomena. In a shocking revelation, a military contractor has dropped a bombshell asserting that the United States has recovered a staggering 12 additional unidentified flying objects. This disclosure echoes the skepticism faced by David Grush last year, who claimed the US had reverse-engineered crashed alien spacecraft. Initially dismissed for lacking tangible proof, Grush's credibility received an unexpected boost as high-ranking intelligence officials and former insiders corroborated key aspects of his assertions. The question now looms, does the US government truly possess extraterrestrial technology? If it does, what is the rationale for concealing this information from the public for this long? Join us as we uncover a major revelation indicating that the United States has recently recovered 12 more unidentified flying objects. In a stunning revelation that has sent shockwaves through the United States, prominent investigative journalist Michael Schellenberger has brought to light a potentially game-changing UFO bombshell. According to Schellenberger's meticulous investigation, a staggering number of 30 non-human craft have been recovered by intelligence officials. This disclosure follows whistleblower David Grush's claim that the US government has a variety of non-human vehicles. Schellenberger, known for his in-depth reporting, acknowledged that the critical information he uncovered emanated from high-ranking intelligence officers, former intelligence officers, and individuals with verifiable involvement in the US government's unidentified aerial phenomena study programs spanning many years. What makes these assertions even more compelling is that, according to Schellenberger, those who came forward with details about crashed UFOs had either witnessed these incidents firsthand or were presented with credible and verifiable evidence. The gravity of the situation becomes apparent when considering that the US government and its military contractors may currently hold at least 12 or more alien spacecraft. Remarkably, these officials have not kept their findings confined to classified circles. Schellenberger highlights that they have shared their discoveries with key entities such as the All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office, signaling the potential magnitude of these revelations. However, the plot thickens when examining Congress's attempt to verify Grush's claims. Despite the seriousness of the allegations, the All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office reportedly informed Congress that they had not come across any verifiable information on recovered UFOs. This raises the critical question of why such evidence was not provided. Are these officers lacking the authority to verify Grush's claims, or is there a deliberate choice not to confirm these assertions? When questioned about his findings by a news channel, Schellenberger himself admitted to being shocked by what he uncovered. The sheer magnitude of the information, coupled with the reluctance or inability of key officers to corroborate these claims, adds an air of mystery and intrigue to the unfolding narrative. In the pursuit of understanding the truth behind these revelations, it becomes imperative to delve deeper into the intricacies of government protocols, the UAP study programs, and the dynamics between intelligence officers and the entities tasked with validating such unprecedented claims. As the nation grapples with the implications of this UFO bombshell, the call for transparency and comprehensive investigation grows louder promising to uncover the mysteries that hover above us in the vast expanse of the unknown. The fascination with UFOs and extraterrestrials is deeply rooted in human history, stretching back decades. This enduring mystery has consistently captured the imagination of people around the world. But the question arises, how did this fascination begin? And why do we persistently entertain the notion that we are not alone in the vast expanse of the universe. Despite government disavowals that have persisted for as long as we can recall, the answer might lie in the sporadic but astonishing sightings that individuals claim to have experienced. Every so often, someone witnesses something so extraordinary in the skies that it rekindles the belief in extraterrestrial visitations to Earth. Over the years, 
numerous individuals have come forward with accounts of not just seeing, but also interacting with beings from other worlds. These first-hand reports, while varying in credibility, have collectively contributed to the pervasive theory that advanced civilizations exist beyond our own. Regrettably, both the US government and the mainstream scientific community have habitually dismissed these popular ideas. Instead, they have favored safer and more secretive narratives. Those who dared to advocate for UFO sightings and extraterrestrial existence often found their credibility under scrutiny, their voices muted. The prevailing dismissal of these claims has, until recently, allowed the government to maintain a veneer of secrecy. However, the status quo is undergoing a seismic shift. People are now refusing to be silenced. They are actively seeking answers that have long been perceived as deliberately concealed. The questions persist. Why does the US government persistently reject and disavow UFO sightings? What compels the authorities to classify all information and data related to UFOs, preventing its disclosure to the public? In a surprising turn of events, the answers to these questions seem to be emerging, regardless of the Pentagon's preferences. Whistleblowers such as David Grush, a former Air Force intelligence officer, Ryan Graves, a former Navy pilot, and David Fravor, a former Navy commander, testified before Congress last year. Their accounts began to unravel the intricate web of lies that the US government had woven over the years. Finally, a spotlight is being shone on the covert practices and hidden truths, challenging the long-standing narrative of denial and secrecy. You see, in an extraordinary twist of events, David Grush, a former American intelligence official, unfolded astonishing revelations during a momentous congressional hearing in the venerable halls of Washington. The House Oversight Committee, presiding over this historic gathering, unveiled a clandestine, decades-long program orchestrated by the US government. This covert initiative, shrouded in secrecy, aimed not only to collect, but in a daring move, to reverse engineer the remnants of crashed UFOs. However, the most astounding revelation was the existence of what Grush cryptically referred to as non-human entities, thrusting the issue of alien life into an unprecedented global spotlight, transforming a once fictional concept into a stark reality. At the heart of this extraterrestrial saga is Grush, a figure who had once led investigations into perplexing and unexplained anomalies known as unidentified aerial phenomena. Grush, positioned within a covert agency under the umbrella of the US Department of Defense, uncovered the astonishing truth. This revelation was not merely a repetition of his explosive claims from June. This time, he testified under oath, imparting a solemnity and gravity to his words that resonated throughout the room. I was informed, in the course of my official duties, of a multi-decade UAP crash retrieval and reverse engineering program to which I was denied access, declared Grush before the committee. The impact of this hearing extended far beyond the boundaries of Washington, captivating a global audience and fueling fervent speculation. Questions arose regarding the possibility that the United States might possess not only evidence of alien life, but also the incomprehensible technology accompanying it. However, amidst the intrigue, a healthy dose of skepticism prevailed. The notion of extraterrestrial life and the US government's alleged involvement in concealing it was nothing short of an earth-shattering revelation. It is crucial to emphasize that Grush had taken an extraordinary step in 2022 by filing a whistleblower complaint. Entrusted with the solemn task of investigating what military, defense, and government agencies knew about aliens and their mysterious crafts, he alleged that a shadowy curtain had been drawn between him and the covert UFO programs holding the keys to these profound mysteries. David Grush claimed he faced the harsh consequences of his bold assertions. He described the aftermath as very brutal, revealing how the backlash had inflicted significant pain 
on both his professional career and personal life. This candid acknowledgement provides a glimpse into the personal toll exacted on those who dare to challenge the veil of secrecy surrounding UFO-related information. During the inquiry, Grush went beyond his tribulations and acknowledged his knowledge of individuals who suffered harm or injury as a result of the government's attempts to conceal UFO information. The revelation of such consequences adds a chilling dimension to the narrative, highlighting the potential risks associated with unveiling classified information. When asked by a member of the Oversight Committee if he had ever feared for his life, Grush responded with a resounding, yes. This admission underscores the gravity of the situation and the personal risks undertaken by those who choose to disclose sensitive information. Despite the adversity he faced, Grush maintained a hopeful tone, expressing his aspiration that his actions would ultimately lead to a positive outcome characterized by increased transparency. His initial allegations first revealed in interviews with the Debrief and News Nation in June triggered a storm of controversy, prompting the Republican-led Oversight Committee to launch a swift and intensive investigation. Since then, the intrigue surrounding the government's knowledge, or lack thereof, regarding UFOs has reached unprecedented levels. In a predictable turn of events, the Pentagon swiftly dismissed David Grush's claims, asserting that he was fabricating the entire narrative and refuting any suggestion of the government ever having alien spacecraft or biologics. However, what the US government perhaps did not anticipate was the emergence of several other government officials who would come forward, providing damning information and evidence in support of Grush's contentious claims. When Michael Schellenberger was pressed about the information obtained from his government sources, he admitted that the revelations were so shocking that he had chosen to omit certain details from his report. What started as a mere inquiry into the Pentagon's possession of UFO videos has evolved into a significant movement. More and more individuals were now acknowledging the possibility that the government indeed possessed non-human spacecraft. The question that naturally arises is, how does one differentiate between a human-made craft and a non-human one? Is it the composition of the aircraft, the materials used, or perhaps the construction methods that set them apart? The complexity of this issue unfolds in an intriguing story about a major aerospace company attempting to engage civilian scientists and engineers in reverse engineering the recovered UFOs. The logic behind this move was the acknowledgement that innovation requires the sharing of knowledge, especially when faced with the critical scientific and engineering challenges posed by these unidentified crafts. However, the Pentagon swiftly rejected the idea of involving a large number of scientists and engineers, citing the potential threat to secrecy inherent in expanding the program. Schellenberger's sources divulged that these non-human crafts are tangible, physical objects, debunking the Pentagon's dismissive narrative of mass hallucination. These objects purportedly exist and are stored in specific military bases and contractor facilities. The key to verifying these claims, as suggested by Schellenberger, lies in Congress's commitment to uncovering the truth. If they are genuinely serious about finding evidence, all they need to do is locate and visit one of these designated facilities. The revelation paints a picture of how close we may be to unraveling the truth about UFOs. However, the crucial question lingers, will the Pentagon willingly disclose information it has closely guarded for decades? Only time will reveal whether the enigmatic secrets surrounding these unidentified aerial phenomena will finally come to light or continue to remain shrouded in the veils of government secrecy. The prospect of discovering evidence of crashed UFOs on Earth is undeniably thrilling, sparking curiosity about the fate of the extraterrestrial pilots involved in these incidents. Questions arise. Did they succumb to the impact of the crashes, or are they being held within military facilities? Michael Schellenberger, a prominent figure in UFO research, has delved into this enigma. 
While he has received reports from multiple credible sources regarding crashed UFOs, only one source could confirm the presence of non-human biologics in the possession of the US government. Schellenberger, exercising caution in his approach, chose not to disclose this information in his public accounts. He reasoned that relying on a single source might not be prudent, and he sought to establish the undeniable presence of UFO craft in government possession. Revealing the existence of non-human biologics, he believed, would compound the shock for readers already grappling with the implications of UFO evidence. Schellenberger sheds light on the challenge faced by those who come forward with insider information on UFOs. They fear losing their security clearance and worry about potential retaliation from within the government, as evidenced in the case of David Grush. You see, in the aftermath of David Grush's testimony to Congress, skepticism naturally emerged. Grush stood alone in his claims, leading many to question the credibility of his assertions. However, a broader perspective unfolds as it is revealed that Grush is just one among at least 30 other whistleblowers affiliated with the federal government or government contractors who have come forward with similar revelations over the past several months. These whistleblowers, each providing a protected disclosure to entities such as the Office of the Intelligence Community Inspector General and the Defense Department Inspector General, have shared information resembling Grush's accounts. Former Navy pilots who testified alongside Grush, asserting no knowledge of a government program for recovering and reverse engineering UFOs, represent only a fraction of the collective testimonies that have surfaced. Prominent skeptic Mick West acknowledged the significance of multiple individuals independently corroborating similar information, stating, more people saying the same thing independently makes it more likely to be true. The sheer number of whistleblowers adds weight to the growing body of claims, challenging the conventional narrative surrounding UFOs. However, Inspector General of the Intelligence Community, Thomas A. Monheim, seemingly contradicted these revelations in a letter to Congress on September 15. While denying specific investigations, Monheim carefully navigated his response, leaving room for interpretation. Analysts have noted that Monheim's wording, which excludes a denial of investigation, suggests a strategic choice of words, allowing for potential ongoing inquiries. Matthew Pines, a civilian intelligence analyst, highlighted this nuance by pointing out that the official taxonomy for ICIG activities encompasses audits, investigations, inspections and reviews. Notably, the absence of a denial regarding investigation opens avenues for speculation regarding the true extent of official scrutiny of these claims. The influx of whistleblowers does not inherently confirm the existence of extraterrestrial life or validate a government conspiracy. Their disclosures may span a range of topics, from UAPs to potential misconduct within UAP programs. Notably, alongside reports of whistleblowers divulging information on alleged wrongdoing, an additional 30 to 50 government employees or contractors have approached the DOD's All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office to provide testimony concerning UAPs. Nick Pope, a renowned expert on unidentified aerial phenomena who previously served in the UK's Ministry of Defence, highlighted the diverse channels through which witnesses and whistleblowers are approaching with their accounts. Some individuals are choosing to disclose information directly to the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, while others are opting for the Department of Defence Inspector General, the Intelligence Community Inspector General, or even Congress. This unfolding scenario has sparked speculation about whether individuals like Grush, along with other UAP whistleblowers, could be part of a deliberate disinformation effort orchestrated by the US government. A historical precedent emerges from a former US Air Force intelligence officer stationed at Kirtland Air Force Base during the 1980s to the early 2000s. This officer, confessing to British journalist Mark Pilkington, admitted to disseminating misinformation about UFOs. His objective was to mislead civilian UFO investigators and shield both classified US military programs and non-human technology initiatives from public scrutiny. However, 
Experts, including Marek von Rennenkampf, a former Pentagon appointee during the Obama administration, cast doubt on the theory that a disinformation campaign would be orchestrated through the Office of the Inspector General. This skepticism arises from the inherent risks involved, as knowingly providing false testimony to the ICIG carries severe penalties, including fines up to $10,000, imprisonment for up to five years, or both. If found guilty of lying to Congress, the consequences for individuals like Grush could result in a maximum prison sentence of five years. Considering the legal ramifications, Renenkampf finds it implausible that numerous individuals would willingly expose themselves to such substantial legal jeopardy by providing false information to inspectors general. This adds complexity to the narrative surrounding Grush's allegations and aligns with the broader context, including ongoing legislative developments related to UAPs in Congress. The historical context of government disinformation campaigns, particularly those involving UAPs, is crucial to understanding the complexities of the current situation. Past instances have demonstrated a blending of accurate and inaccurate information, creating challenges in deciphering the true nature of UAP phenomena. Both skeptics and believers in the UFO phenomenon acknowledge the need for greater transparency and disclosure to prevent intentional misinformation from government officials. As highlighted by Pines, the alternative possibilities are perplexing. Either numerous high-ranking officials are under a collective, enduring delusion, actively participating in a broad-scale, long-running psychological deception, or they are genuinely disclosing factual information about extraordinary covert programs. This nuanced perspective underscores the importance of carefully navigating the balance between skepticism and open-minded inquiry. In the words of West, while some may perceive ufology as frivolous and a misuse of government funds, the demand for revealing classified information, especially about crashed alien craft, persists among the public. The tension between skepticism and the desire for transparency underscores the intricate nature of the UAP discourse and the challenges faced by those seeking credible information in this complex field. The veil of secrecy surrounding UFOs is not unique to the United States. Contrary to popular belief, it is not an exclusive realm of the US government. Surprisingly, there is intense competition among global powers, such as the US, China and Russia, in developing and reverse engineering these extraterrestrial technologies. The dynamics at play transcend national borders, revealing a complex interplay of interests. It becomes evident that the United States is not alone in withholding information about UFOs from the public. China and Russia are actively engaged in a formidable competition, akin to a modern space race, striving to decipher and replicate these advanced technologies. This international competition adds a layer of intrigue to the broader context of UFO secrecy. The historical backdrop of the US engaging in a space race with Russia is well known, and China, not wanting to be left out of the global dominance dynamics, actively participates in this intricate technological race. Thank you for watching another episode of Voyager while you are still here. Click the video on your screen to see more mind-blowing videos like this one.